Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm here to do a intro to sinking funds. I've had a few people ask me to do this type of video and I know it's definitely not something new, but I thought it would be fun to kind of walk through with you guys and to give you some ideas of kind of what my ideas behind sinking funds are. So as always, um, I have an Erin Condren product. Right now they're doing a launch of the new life planner so if you're interested in that make sure to use links down below this is just a dot grid notebook and i've actually seen a few people use these notebooks for budgeting instead of getting an actual planner so that's definitely something you could do the dot grid pages are so awesome for sinking funds so many people use them that way and i love using the dot grid pages on my in my deluxe deluxe monthly for um for that so anyway when I began our sinking funds, we started out pretty small. And that's because we kind of had an end goal in mind and you can start as many or as little as you want. Um, you really just have to make it work for your family. So the first item, um, the first thing I wanna talk about is kind of the layout. So I always like to have a column for category, which is what you're saving for. Um, the beginning balance of the sinking fund, so if you're just starting out, this would be zero for this month. What you're adding to the sinking fund, what you're subtracting or what you're spending from the sinking fund, and then what amount you're ending with. Um, so of course, as you're going through, if you're beginning the sinking funds process, or if you are, you know, you've been doing it for a while, this might look differently um, for you, but I just figured we'll start off and, you know, kind of make it seem like we are starting completely new with sinking funds. So one category that we have for our sinking funds is car insurance, and I think that's a good place to start. Most people have car insurance, so it's definitely something that a lot of people can relate to. So let's say in this situation, and this is exactly how I set it up when I, um, when I started sinking funds. So let's say you're starting off this month with sinking funds and your beginning balance, of course, is zero. Now, for your car insurance, you pay it every six months because doing so gives you a discount. So let's say you have one car and your car insurance is $500 per um, every six months. And of course you have six months, so you'd take the full 500 divided by six, and that gets you $83.33. I usually round it up because I'd rather have more money than less money, but that means you would need to add $83.34, let's say, to your sinking fund every month. Now, normally, I would say do your sinking funds on a yearly basis if that's how often you're paying, but of course, I am paying car insurance, and in this example, they're paying car insurance every six months, but if you think about it, if you do the 500 plus 500 to get a, um, to get a yearly number, and then you divide that by 12, you're getting the same exact number. So. Um, I just like to think of it in terms of when it's going to be due, how much money you're going to need. Now this would change, let's say your car insurance is due in three months. And same thing, you owe $500 in three months. Then your first amount in would have to be 166.67 instead of 83.34. So really, it just depends on when you're starting and when the amounts are due. So, um, for example, we, we do something a little weird for people our age where we have a cell phone with Jason's parents. So it just, it's a family plan, it saves us money, um, and we, you know, obviously try and just look for any way possible to save money. So, again, starting off with zero, and um, I think the car insurance is... Uh, let's say $500 per month, or actually, not per month, sorry. I'm gonna split it up again because this is another situation where we're paying every six months and I'm going to make the situation that we need to pay earlier. So let's say it's 250 and we owe that in two months. 
So what would what would we put into our sinking funds? So you just do the 250, which is due in two months, divided by the two to get 125. And that is what you would put into your sinking fund this month. Now next month, or after you go about paying this, you would do the total amount due in six months divided by the six to get 4167. So you can see really when you're doing this, you have to do these sinking funds based off of how much time you have until the amount is due. And I know that's really hard for some people to understand, um, mostly because you think, well, how am I supposed to put all this money into it? If I'm starting now and it's due in a couple months, how am I supposed to come up with all of this money? And you just, you just have to prioritize what is most important. Obviously, you probably need your car insurance, you probably need your cell phone, um, but maybe look for other ways to you know, decrease that number if you can. Like I said, we have a family plan, so that definitely cuts back on some of that. So there are a lot of different, different sinking funds that people have, and if you watch or you look on Instagram, there are so many sinking funds out there that people do. One sinking fund that I would love to add to our list is medical, and that is just because I never want to be in a situation where we don't go to the doctor because of medical expenses. Now, obviously, I would never do that, especially with a kid, but a lot of people don't go because they don't have the money. So I would love to add medical. Um, another thing that you could add is dental or vision. You could also add um, home maintenance or car maintenance. So like I was saying, um, those are just a few of the different categories that you can have for sinking funds. Really, you just have to make it work for you and your family. Um, for us right now, a few sinking funds is wor are working, but in the future, I would definitely like to add more. Um, what you decide to put in sinking funds, it really just depends on, again, your family. But for us, I like to put things that I know either the amount and the timing. So car insurance, you know it's going to be due every six months. You know that it's going to be around what you paid last time unless there's something that happened. Um, you know that your cell phone bill is going to be due. Be due. You know that every year there's an out-of-pocket that you might have to pay for medical. Um, I would also love to, to add sinking funds for clothing for me and Jason and also for Macy. Um, you know that you're going to have to make home repairs. You know that your car is going to need maintenance. Those are things that you all know. Um, you could definitely do it for fun things like vacations. You could do it for family pictures. I've seen so many different options, but really what sinking funds is, is basically just a savings account for things that you know are going to happen or that you are expecting that are going to happen um, and you want to be prepared for. It could be good things, it could be bad things, but um, it's just somewhere where you can put money into and know that it's set aside for that purpose. So anyway, that's what sinking funds means to me. If you guys have any questions about sinking funds or what we do for sinking funds, leave comments down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. All right, guys, I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.